I'm Shannon. This is Jonathan and our dog Mira. This is our 2019 Mercedes Sprinter 170 inch wheelbase. This content is sponsored by Outdoorsy. Through Outdoorsy, you can rent your camper van out to make extra cash and you can rent a van to try van life before you commit. This is actually our third van. Um, we, our first build. Our first build that we've done ourselves. We kind of learned some lessons from the first two builds and kind of eventually had the opportunity to kind of make our dream come true with this van. We were not both on the same page as far as van life. He definitely was into it and I needed some convincing. And the way we made it work was um, building a lot of comfort and home luxuries into it. Uh, we put a lot of time and love into building it and we'd love to show it to you. This is our fridge. We have a Dometic CFX3 95 liter fridge, dual compartment. Uh, you can set the temperatures for each compartment. Right now we have a fridge freezer. Uh, we're heading up to some wine country uh, in a little bit, so we may turn this into a wine cooler for our drive back. It takes maybe about 80 watts peak, uh, not too much. All in all, we love it. It keeps about a week's worth of food for us. One of the things we really wanted in our van was a shower. When it came time to decide what we wanted to do for a shower, one of the things that was very important for us was to keep our space nice and open. Um, so we didn't want a fully permanent closed in shower. Um, we had this in our last van, it wasn't really good for us. So this is the solution we came up with. Um, as you can see, the entire right side of our kitchen here has a fold up countertop, um, has a little hook, all of that keeps it in place. The bottom here actually slides out. We have your Nature's Head composting toilet um, with a vent in the back that goes out through the floor. And then for our shower, we actually have some fake doors here that'll open up. Inside our fake doors are some hooks. And then what we'll do when it's time to shower is we'll bring the shower head up. We'll take the shower curtain out and we'll just put the shower curtain around. We have a pause button in our shower head, which is really nice for van life when you're trying to conserve water. We actually have a hot water heater that can produce unlimited hot water, which is really nice. So we'll get hot water um, as fast as we use it for both our shower and our sink. So we'll use the shower at least every other day or so. Um, it's probably the biggest draw for our water. In van life, you choose your luxuries, and this is what we wanted. So it works out really well for us. Here we have our Nature's Head composting toilet. Um, in our last van, we actually uh, had a regular holding tank for our black water. Um, we decided that um, it's not worth uh, the extra tank, having to store it outside, dealing with winterizing, all that stuff. We've loved it so far. We haven't really had any major issues. The urine compartment fills up every two to three days or so. It really hasn't been too much of an issue to find places to dump it. Um, we actually usually have paper bags that will open up and then drop the urine jug in and carry it off to wherever we dump. Pretty nice and stealthy. As for the solids, um, there's a hand crank here that we use after every time we go number two. Um, we fill it with peat moss that we order off of Amazon. They have a nice little uh, two pound bag, which is what Nature's Head recommends for your composting toilet. So we have uh, an induction cooktop. Our electric system is pretty hefty uh, in order to have everything run off of just solar. We had some pretty bad experiences with propane in our previous van, so this one we just wanted to go completely off of solar. Um, so we've got the induction here. We actually have another separate portable induction cooktop that we will take out if we need two burners. Um, we also have down here our pots, pans, cooking utensils, and we have this Ninja toaster oven slash air fryer slash pizza oven, do everything kind of oven. Um, so when we cook, we usually will have something on this stove and then we'll either bring out the other 
induction cooktop right here or we'll have the oven out on here. We've also got this sink which I think is like the perfect size sink for a van. It's I think maybe a 15 by 17 inch and then it's actually pretty deep so it's kind of perfect. We originally thought oh we'll just have enough dishes and we'll just do the dishes as we dirty them who actually does that. Um, so we'll be able to pile our dishes a little bit and not have it be super overwhelming. It is a touch faucet, which is great and really annoying. Sometimes you go to reach for something and you accidentally turn it on. Um, but otherwise it's pretty convenient for washing your hands. You just need to tap it. So one of the things funny enough that we get comments on is this spice rack because it's magnetic and it just sticks up there. We have not had any problems with them falling off. I just got it off of Amazon. It's a metal plate that we screwed into the bottom of the cabinet and then it came with these magnetic little jars and they're really strong. We also have some storage up here, nothing super fancy. Um, got our dishes and plates and whatever up there. Some more pantry stuff here. These are just friction hinges so they stay up when they're open and we have not had any problems with them um, opening when we're driving. We do have magnet latches on these bottom drawers. So one of the things that we kind of geeked out over were these Arctic turn windows. And this is probably the longest one that they make. Our other one on our sliding door is a little bit taller and a little bit shorter. We just really like the features. So it's got this built-in blackout shade that does work. It is a blackout. Uh, and then it's got this built-in bug screen as well. And they just kind of clip together. So when you want to open the window, you can unclip it and have kind of any variation. They also have these latches that lock um, so that you can easily open and close, keep it nice and secure. They open up pretty far. The other really cool thing about these is they are double paned. So it's really good for insulation. So back here, we kind of has, have a his and hers set up. So this is Jonathan's side. Um, we've each got one of these little cubbies that just has books, notebooks, charging cables. We each have our cameras in there. Um, we've got the slide out table. This is where we eat and where we work. Um, it's a little small for both of us to work. We both have fairly large laptops, so sometimes one of us will work on the bed, one of us will work in here. Not a big deal. This is my little cubby. This is just sort of more storage. We've got a little room for some hanging clothes. I got a, like a couple blouses that I don't wear super often, but try to keep them wrinkle free. Here we have the control center for the van. Um, this is where we control all of our electrical systems and our heating system. Um, right off the bat, this wooden plaque here um, is actually a piece of cherry from a barn from my grandmother's house when she was growing up. Um, that's pretty special to us because uh, my grandmother and my grandfather, when he was still alive, they traveled full time um, in their RV after they retired. and. We kind of got the itch from them, and uh, Grandma is really uh, the person who kind of helped to make it all happen for us in the beginning. So it's really special to have this piece. And here we just have some knobs for some lights. They're on dimmers uh, for various places in the van. Right here we have the Victron uh, color display. Um, this is how we monitor everything electrical in our van. Um, so we'll check our battery power, solar intake, um, how much draw we're taking for 12 and 120 volt, all that stuff. We have five 90 amp hour lithium batteries. They are Lion Energy. Um, so 450 amp hours total or 5,400 watt hours. We have four 180 watt panel, great brand solar panels on, this, on the roof for a total of 720 watts. And that will last us at least three days off grid um, if we have no sun at all. We also can charge from our alternator. Um, we don't really need that quite as much. It is nice to have though. And on our left, we have our control panel for our Van Life Tech heating system. Um, Van Life Tech's a company based out of Portland, uh, a bunch of really smart snowboarders and skiers um, who have really built an awesome system for uh, van life in the winter, basically. So uh, what this system has is two-stage heating, so we do have radiant heated floors in this van. Second stage heating is uh, just forced air, so we do have an air vent um, that'll shoot out hot air if we need to heat things up quicker. It also controls our hot water, and it will boil water three gallons per minute, which is faster than we can use it. 
um, which is really nice. The system kind of works from an S-bar heater, which is mounted underneath the van. It taps into the diesel um, auxiliary tap. Using this display, we can set the temperatures uh, that we want. We can set a schedule. We typically like to have it 70 degrees in the day, 66 overnight. It's Wi-Fi, so like if we're snowboarding and uh, we want to turn up the heat when we're coming back down on our last ride, um, we can just turn on the phone on our lift up and set the temp that's really nice it's been a fantastic system we we're in new england all last winter we literally never touched the thing it just kept rolling we just had to make sure that we didn't run out of diesel um, when you're in really cold temps and it's blasting um, at full speed it'll take maybe in our experience like three quarters of a gallon of diesel a day um, so 25 gallon tank in this thing, it's going to last a while. As far as how much power it consumes, um, we see it cycle as high as maybe about 200 watts, but that only happens for maybe, I don't know, two or three minutes at a time whenever you need the heat. Up here, we've got a permanent bed, which was really important to us. Our last van, we had to make up and make down the bed every day, and it was just a lot to deal with when you're living in it full time. So, permanent bed, and it is pretty high up because we wanted to store bikes underneath. It's very comfortable, and you can't sit straight up, but we don't really sit straight up anyways when we're sitting up here. We kind of just slouch a little. It's not a big deal. We've got again his and hers so this side is my clothes and I've got just REI packing cubes and they fit exactly in here they're the exact size so it's perfect I have a couple of those in each of these cabinets so our clothes storage does not come all the way back and that is on purpose because we want to make sure that if we sit up in the middle of the night for some reason we're not killing our heads. We've also got two smaller Arctic turn windows back here and it is super nice for air ventilation. We usually, when we need a good airflow, we'll usually have these two open um, and then shut the front two and then just rip the fan so it just has a really nice airflow from the back all the way to the front of the van. In the garage we have on the left our electrical system. Um, this has all of our batteries, inverter, uh, solar charger, all that. It goes as far back as the wheel well. Um, inverter is kind of big, so we kept a lot of space for that. On top, we have some tools, things we might need for updates, things on the road. Um, we have a one wheel here. We originally built the elevated bed platform to store bikes and a whole bunch of our other outdoor gear. We got cornhole, we got a pitch back for baseball, and then lastly, a couple water tanks. Fresh water tank, gray water tank, they're both 32 gallons. They go almost the whole length of the bed. We will go about four days. Um, before needing to empty our gray water tank, fill up the fresh water tank. That's with regular showering. One of our favorite new toys in the van this year is our McLean Metalworks hammock mount. Um, this was gifted to us by our, our friend Jess. It is an awesome little contraption made by some very smart people out in uh, Seattle, I believe. All you need to do when you want to set up the hammock is open up the little uh, mount there, slide it out. Thanks for letting us show you around. We're on Instagram, don't post a lot, but if you wanna shoot us a message, if you have any questions, we're at Van Voyage. We hope to see you guys out on the road sometime soon. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you hadn't noticed, we do sell an ebook for how to convert a van. It has over 190 pages of detailed instructions and diagrams, also 25 video tutorials, which are specifically for the ebook buyer. Creating a van for many people is obviously a really intimidating project. But I really believe, and I've seen it time and time and time again, that with the right information, anyone can turn out with a pretty decent van conversion. So check the link in the description, subscribe to the channel if you are not already, uh, and drop us a comment if you like this video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.